Hey, what's up, Leron here. I want to address this interesting uh, issue and maybe open it up for discussion. Um, the thing I want to talk about is realistic painting, realism, being accurate, um, trying to draw things accurately. Um, and I think especially as it pertains to things like figures, people, portraits, things that are considered difficult. At the beginning, um, you may feel inspired to create and to paint something in you. Uh, you know, that's how it happened to me. I saw art by, um, by other artists that really moved me to try it out. And very often the things I try and do um, are inspired by someone else or something else that I see that makes me feel like I want to try this out. Um, so then what happens is, one whether it's you, me, or anyone else, one begins to try and do the thing. Um, and then there's a certain gap in your vision and the result or the thing you had in mind and kind of thought maybe you'd uh, create um, and then what, a what actually is going on on paper. Uh, and a lot of people um, see the lack of skill, let's call it, uh, that they have. Uh, don't try to read too much into the specifics, but to, I want to try and um, transfer onto you the gist of what I'm saying. Um, so a lot of people are disappointed at their lack of skills or abilities. Um, many quit. Most people quit at, at everything. You know, most people don't do something consistently, which is fine. Um, but then I assume a lot of um, the people who are watching my videos are the type of people who do persevere and, and create and continue to create, whether, you know, you see improvement, you don't see improvement. There is this uh, seed of wanting to create. Um, and that's okay, you know, if you, if you just enjoy the videos, you don't even uh, paint or create on a regular basis. Nothing wrong with that. No, nothing in what I'm saying here uh, is a judgment. Um, but then what happens is one realizes the gap in skill. Uh, and then a side quest begins, almost like a video game, where you try and be accurate. You try and draw things realistically. To me, that comes in the form of diving deeper into anatomy, trying to draw people perfect, being anatomically accurate, getting all the muscles in, making people look believable. But what happens is where problems start to arise is when this side quest becomes the main quest and one forgets that they even had a main quest. Um, I see this a lot actually in the comics sphere. A lot of people say they want to write a comic book, but they're not good enough at drawing. Now, the question a person really can ask themselves is, do I want to create a comic? Do I want to create a story that is told visually? Or is my goal to draw accurately? And I'm not saying you can't do both. But what I am saying is, a side quest is a side quest. Drawing accurately for most people, unless you're one of the rare individuals where the thing that drives you is being accurate and true to the source, most people are not inspired by being accurate. They're inspired by something else. To me, the inspiration comes from being able to portray my vision. Um, I would like, if anything, to be accurate to my own vision rather than the the subject matter itself. Whether I perceive the subject matter realistically or not is a different matter. But the problem arises when one forgets they had a main quest that was to tell a great story, to make people feel something with, say, for example, a painting or a comic book. All of these things that at the beginning were the things that got you into creation in the first place. And then you start realizing, oh, this is something I'm not good at, or this is something I'm not, whatever. And you start acquiring these side quests of trying to be more accurate, learning perspective, learning light and shadow, learning values. And people just forget that they had a main quest. Now there's nothing wrong with side quests. There's nothing, there's no wrong or right at all, but there's nothing wrong in particular with learning a specific set of skills to serve your main purpose, right? The problem is these things sometimes come out of proportion. Now, the only reason this is a problem is because the main quest, the thing that drove you in the first place, you just don't do. And if you've had this feeling where 
you don't get the result you want, you get discouraged, and you just, you know, you stop. Whether, whether you quit fully or you just put down the brush and just go, you know? Um, I think accuracy and being able to paint things realistically is just a very poor motivator. And if, if th there's nothing to do here, really, I'm, I'm not um, advocating for you to do anything. Uh, what I am maybe um, trying to sell you on is thinking about this and letting it do its thing. Because there is some seed of creativity in you and that was the thing that drove you to create in the first place. Um, if you are able to find that, and it's there, it's there, you just forgot about it, it got covered up by things, you didn't work at forgetting it, it just happened. Uh, if you find that, you will find the motivation as well. So when it comes to, you know, painting realistically, and that's another question I get from time to time, right, should I... Um, should I first, something that um, uh, Snowbro on the Discord asked like a couple of days ago, should I do first the Frustration Free Watercolor course and then the Watercolor Realism course? And I think you also mentioned that you are now very interested in realism. So then, of course, my answer is there is no right order to things. If you're interested in something, that's probably the thing that's going to carry you through and, and get you to do things. And the mere act of doing around that thing that interests you is going to be enough uh, to make you satisfied and happy and joyful as you create. Um, so should one not work to improve the things that are not good at? Not necessarily. Should one, um, should one work on all their weaknesses? Not necessarily. I think it's a matter of what inspires you, what truly inspires you and got you creating in the first place. Um, and it's never something that's going to happen by force. It is never something that's going to be forced. It's always the thing that is just in front of you, like under your nose, hiding there, easy with my nose, quite a big one. Always the thing that's hiding in plain sight. That's always been there, never left. Anything that you lose motivation in doing was just not true. It was just, it may be a part of the thing you enjoy doing, right? You tried painting something, you lost motivation. But the reason you lost motivation is because for that particular thing you were doing, where your painting actions came from, the motivation was never there. And that is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. A different angle will provide motivation, inspiration, desire to create joy, whatever it is. Um, so whatever you make of this, you know, Feel free to interpret your own way. I will say one more thing, um, specifically about um, manga. That's the most personal. I'll give you one example about manga and one with watercolor. Um, that's my most personal example is a lot of the project I started, like most of the projects I started, I never finished um, because the inspiration wasn't there. But one project I did finish and I did publish as a full chapter. You can read it in um, uh, Webtoon, the app. Um, and that I finished in like two weeks because all the things connected. So I created a manga or a comic book, however you want to call it, in a, a two weeks maybe. I drew the majority of it. Every minute of it was intensely engrossed in creation, whereas other projects didn't happen. Now, why was I able to do this and not that? The place from which I was creating it Everything connected. I had a passion for the story. I had the the passion for the idea. Now, I'm not saying necessarily you need to chase passion. You don't have to chase anything. Anything. I'm just saying the thing that is usually the easiest to do is the thing you're after. And that, you know, people will take this to the extreme and say, yeah, the easiest thing to do is just to slouch on the sofa, watch some TV. That's not true, actually. If you truly examine it, that's not true. Um, but in any case, that's one example with manga. I want to give you another example with watercolor. I could work on a big ass painting, really complex, full of details, um, and not really enjoy it. Um, but then I can just grab a random piece of paper and just put the paint there and watch it and look at it and see what it does. And putting a one wash next to another and looking at the reaction of the water and the paint and how they move and enjoy that tremendously more. At the end of it, I don't really have a painting to show for, 
But that time I spent doing this, merely the act of painting and playing with water and paint was the thing. That was the thing. And I'm not saying it's about the journey and not the results, because I absolutely think it's about the results as well. I'm saying it's about the moment of creation. And when that moment appears and you ride that wave, you generally tend to spend your time in a worthwhile manner. Um, and that's why the answer to so many questions I get asked is, it depends on you. It depends on what you want. It depends on where you want to go. It's not about this or that. It's never about this or that. It's never about the thing you ask. That's, that's usually the usual answer, right? Um, because these things are very personal. They're very nuanced. They're very uh, dependent on the person asking the question. They're very context-based. Um, and they're very emotion-based too, I would say. So I hope this makes sense. I hope this, I don't even know how to conclude this video, but hopefully uh, it gives you some food for thought. I did want to do one of these. Um, let me know your thoughts in a comment down below. Let me know if you can resonate, if you can relate. Was there a project that was super duper easy and you just rode that inspiration wave? Um, let me know, I'm curious to hear. I do want to thank you for watching and thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. You're a huge part of my ability to post tons of these free videos, free lessons, free tutorials, and everything else. So if you want to get credits at the end of the videos, be sure to check that out. You can put just like $1 a month. And it's super duper appreciated uh, and you will get credits. So thank you so much for that. And I will talk to you again real soon. Till next time.